uh, just kind of your first thoughts on Green Bay and their style of play more than anything. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, they play a very, <clears throat> you know, up-tempo system. They really try to play smaller at times, mm -hmm. even though they have a couple quality big guys as the game progresses. Um, they'll really try to, to spread you out yeah. and, <clears throat> you know, make it difficult for you to, to contain them. But they also put a lot of pressure on the basketball, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to pick up the pace of the game and um, make it hard for you, make you play, you know, at a speed that you're uncomfortable with. You've always seemed to value seeing a lot of different styles of play right. early in seasons to try to prepare you for everything that comes down the line. How yeah. much can this help you long term? It really can help you, you know, just because when you get, you know, down the road, especially in the Big Ten, you don't see a lot of this. People mm -hmm. value the basketball, they play in the half court, you know, but people don't sometimes realize that the Big Ten really helps you get in the NCAA tournament because you got to have good guards, you got to score the basketball, but you are going to get into some grinded out situations and that really helps you. Um, this is really kind of the flip of it to where they're, they're constantly attacking you and constantly trying to drive the basketball and get in the paint, but also they're going to pressure you, do give you some different looks. Not They're not a traditional right. um, Big Ten defensive team. You know, they're going to run and jump you. They're going to mm -hmm. You know, swarm the basketball when you dribble. Um, yeah. Just do a lot of different things. Whether they switch on the ball or switch off the ball, they they, they still aren't definite in anything. They they mix it up and just give you a lot of different looks. Does it make Nogel's health even more important for you, having another ball handler out there? Oh, why not? Yeah, I pressure. guess so. Just having quality players helps right. you. You know, he's a good player, so you know you definitely want to have all your guys, but you also want to make sure you keep things in perspective. You know, if, if he can't go, you don't want him to go and make his injury, mm -hmm. you know, worse. And you know, but if he's uh, healthy and he can go, he, you know, he'll definitely help us. What's, is there a lesson to take out of last year's non-conference that you want this team to, to learn about? Or? Um, not really, because I don't think it was anything from us, you know, not being ready to play or things of that nature. We just didn't play that well in some games. But, you know, we, all the people that beat us, Notre Dame, Florida State, uh, Virginia Tech. I'm probably missing a couple in there. Some one, one team in there somewhere. Texas. Texas. You know, they're all really good teams. And, and so I, I thought we were in a position to win three of those four. Um, Notre Dame beat us pretty handedly. And so, um, you know, but no, there's, I don't think there's anything from last year. I think there's something to be learned just about each year is a little bit different. You have to. You, know, you have to build your resume. You know these games are just as important as any other game that you play. You know if you win it, it's going to help you. If you lose, it doesn't. You know that's profound, but um, it, it is true. And uh, every game, you know, matters. You know, it's a, some games matter more than others. But it shouldn't take away from the fact that you need to do everything possible to help Purdue win. Do you have a general expectation for your freshmen at this point for this season? How much they can help you? Um, you know, we're still kind of trying to figure that out. I think the thing that for us kind of shaping what we're doing is when we have a player that we know is going to play a lot and not play. Mm -hmm. You know, it gave those yeah. guys more of an opportunity in those games. And that was good to see, you know, for them to get that experience in those games because they wouldn't got as much of an experience if no gel was playing. Um, but no, just, just kind of trying to shape everything up and um, help them along. You know, it's, it's hard for them because they're all used to playing all the time. Right. I think that's probably the toughest transition. You know, you're trying to put everything into 10 minutes or put everything into 7 minutes or 14 minutes or 18 minutes when you're used to playing the whole game. Right. And so it's really hard for a young player. Are you going to redshirt anybody? Yeah, we, we've uh, had some discussions, but we haven't made any final decisions yet. So hopefully we – and we've done it a couple of different ways through the years. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes we'll make that decision before the first game and sometimes we'll float through, you know, the first couple games just to kind of see where we are. Obviously they won't play if that's the case. And, um, but no, we're, we're still kind of in that, that waiting game right now just to kind of see and everybody needs to talk to um, the people that are close to them and help them make decisions and also just kind of talking to me about where I see them right now from a number standpoint. Like, you can go on and on as, you know, how much you like somebody as a player, but it's also weighing this year versus something that can happen four years ago and what that means for them. So, um, you know, we'll see each... I think Aaron and <coughs> Sasha were great examples mm -hmm. for us in their redshirt year. And now it's, you look at their careers and maybe halfway through their career now. Instead, they're just starting their career. You know, and they got, you know, right. you got a chance to start this year. And, you know, anytime you got a chance to start as a sophomore, you should in your next two years also. That mean they will, but 
you got to keep earning it, but it still just puts you in that position. But the the waiting and the patience of that is, is sometimes excruciating for people that are competitive. Any lineups that you've uh, kind of experimented with in these first couple of go rounds of exhibition in the in Wood Providence that you like or, or dislike more than others? Uh, um, not at this point. You know, obviously, we had a good start to our game the other day. I think anytime you start a game and you start guys and you play well, but then that group didn't play well to start the second half. So, you know, you start to build on something and then you see that. And when you get into those games and you get up 30, 40 points, you know, you can't play the score, but uh, human nature sometimes creeps in and you do play the score. So we just got to work on our kind of our discipline in those situations and just being better at those at those moments. So, you know, we have a lot of different uh, looks. We have some guys that are interchangeable. We could play bigger, um, but we also have to be more disciplined to do that. And so the more discipline we can get, especially on the defensive end, you know, you know that, I think that can help us. How often do you want to play Trey and, uh, and um, Matt together this year? Is that something that you've kind of thought about going into the Green Bay game or, or beyond? Or do you Well, they're to... smaller. They're not bigger. Yeah, but just I just meant in general. Just uh, yeah, uh, sure. They're both good players. You know, I want to play good players, and I think in the Virginia game we did that because we had to. We were struggling to get rebounds, and Travion. That's where you know Travion really helps us when we're in there. Like, so you no know, gel was out against Providence, and when Trey was out, right, you know, you know, we, we struggled to to get some of those rebounds, and that's I think that's what he gives us. But it's also. We still got to play ball screen defense. We still got to play transition defense. And when you have a big lineup, I always used to say this about Isaac. Like, when he was in for his 15 minutes, we threw him the ball all the time because we wanted to win that matchup while he was in. So we have to do a better job, you know, when that's the case. We, we have to do a better job anyways, whether Travion is in with Matt or not, whether they're in by themselves. So they're getting those guys to bat. They need to get the basketball. But they got to, you know, continue to work at posting up, and we got to continue to work at being able to post feed. So there's a lot of there's a lot more things that go into it also.